You've heard of the zero-g plane, right? The one that flies and does parabolas and makes you feel weightless? The one that Kate Upton did her photo shoot on? Yeah, that one. Well, I got the chance to chat with a Vomit Comet veteran. Emily Calandrelli is an aerospace grad from MIT. She also has a new show coming up on Fox in the Fall called Exploration Outer Space. You should check it out. But coolest of all, Emily has gotten the chance to go up in the Vomit Comet twice. She's going to answer all your questions about the experience and how you could go up in that plane. Okay, here's Emily. My name's Emily Calandrelli, and I'm a host and co-producer of Exploration Outer Space on Fox. So the plane flies in parabolic motion, and so at the very top of the parabola, that's where you get that 20 to 25 seconds of weightlessness. And you don't feel like the plane is diving towards the ground, which it is, which is terrifying. <laughs> and it's kind of like a really large roller coaster. And when you're in a roller coaster and you go over a hump, that's when you know your butt lifts off the seat and you get that weightless feeling, your, your stomach drops. That's the feeling you get when you go over the hump in the Vomit Comet. When you go to the bottom of the hump, that's when you get 1.8, two times your gravity. And so you get these, these waves of weightlessness and then you feel twice gravity. And then you get weightless and then you feel twice your weight. And so that feeling is what gives the Vomit Comet its name, because doing that over and over and over again is not natural and it makes your body sick. It always sucks to answer that question because I want to be like, no, I did not, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> they call it microgravity for a reason, like micro ten to the negative six. Like it's not perfectly zero gravity. You can, they actually have a scale in the plane that tells you, you know, like, 0.001 gravity or, you know, they, it tells you where you're at in terms of um, how weightless you feel. And it's never zero. So if you are not near a wall, you're not near a ceiling, you're not near the, near the ground, you can't go anywhere. There's nothing for you to push off of. And so it's funny because when you see people experiencing zero gravity for the first time, their natural reaction is to like bicycle kick because they think that that can help control their orientation, but it can't. So you're just tumbling in the middle of this aircraft and you're not going anywhere, but you're like flailing like you can. And so most people, when they experience this for the first time, they look ridiculous, and I did too. So safety on this aircraft is the most important thing for them. And they have a bunch of people to help you uh, not kick people in the face. <laughs> I think that's the priority <laughs> because you see these people and they're like bicycle kicking and they, they can't control their bodies. It's not really their fault. This is a new experience for them. Did you kick anyone in the face? Yeah, definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> definitely kicked some people in the face. <laughs> Sorry. So I got involved in this Vomit Comet stuff by joining a microgravity research class and I was with five other students and we created an experiment that we wanted to test in zero gravity. So my experiment in undergrad was we were testing fractals under zero gravity, uh, under the zero gravity environment. We were injecting like different types of oils into water to see the viscous fluid and watch how it fractaled in zero gravity conditions. I also worked on an experiment where it was, uh, we tested a circular hydraulic jump in zero gravity. There was one that was really cool. There was a, a woman who was strapped down to a treadmill who was trying to run in zero gravity. They had an oven on my flight. They were trying to find ways to cook different things in zero gravity. So that's the best way to get on the Vomit Comet is if you have research that you want to do in zero gravity. They have an undergrad program and a graduate program and you can apply to NASA online. And if your team gets selected, you get flown to Houston to fly on the Vomit Comet. I feel like this would be an experience that everybody should have, but you need an extra five or six thousand dollars laying around to do it, unfortunately. Um, I recommend it to everybody with a body because you get to experience a little bit of the experience that astronauts get when they go to outer space. And the two things that astronauts say are the most exciting part of outer space are one, the view, the view is spectacular, but two, the microgravity experience, the floating in zero gravity for you know a longer period of time. So if you get to have 
one of two of the things that astronauts say is the best part of going to outer space, you should probably do that. Next week, I'll be posting a video on the physics of the Vomit Comet, so subscribe to my channel for that. I'll also post the link in the comments when it's up.